It took me almost two hours to make this math puzzle book generator inside Excel. I have no idea how long it's going to take me to show you how to do it. And I am going to show you everything, absolutely everything. So if you follow this tutorial by the end of this video, you will have a working math puzzle book generator inside Excel. And when I say math book generator, I actually mean this. So by the end of this video, this is what you're going to have. You're going to have an Excel file that once you click export in PDF, you're going to get PDF with puzzles. And then on the back of it, you're going to have pages with solutions. And once you click on generate new puzzle inside Excel, and once you export it, you're going to get a brand new book with brand new puzzles. So let me just show you the first page of this one. So you see 697. So this is first book I created with my Excel generator. And then I uh, refreshed the numbers and then I got completely brand new puzzle book. And now that I have my Excel puzzle generator, I can always export new file. And this new file is going to give me new puzzles. And that is what I'm going to show you in this video from the top. So I'm going to start from the beginning. Everything is going to be shown. So all you have to do is follow this tutorial. So let me start with opening a brand new Excel file. So blank book, completely blank book. First thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to change the cells to be square shaped. So that is my goal. I want to have square shaped cells. I'm going to start in this corner. Now the puzzle I am creating or demonstrating in this video is a three by three math puzzle grid. So I have selected first six cells, rows and columns, and I'm going to select all borders for them. And this is where I'm going to have numbers. So I'm going to type number five here so I can see the font. I'm going to select everything. So select everything and select middle, middle alignment and increase the font. In this section, I'm going to have math operator. This is where I'm going to have math operator. This is math operator and this cell is going to be empty. I'm going to fill this empty cell with a color. I'm going to pick this one. So once I have done this, I can use F4 on my keyboard to repeat the last action I did. So I'm just selecting these cells and pressing F4 on my keyboard. This is where I'm going to have a solution. So I'm going to change that to have a border. So once again, F4, 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 F4. This is where I'm going to have equal sign. So type equal sign here, here. You can also control C to copy it, paste it here, paste it here, paste it here, paste it here. Okay, so that is the first part done. Now I need to make sure that the numbers in these nine cells are generated randomly. You cannot do that inside this section here. What we're going to do is in column R, I'm going to type nine numbers. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then open this one, spread it a little bit so you can see it and type equal rand open bracket, close bracket, and press enter. Now drag this here in the right corner down to match how many numbers you have. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. In this cell here, I need to have a formula that is going to display either plus sign, minus sign, or multiplication sign randomly. The reason why I'm not including the division sign is division sign needs to be programmed differently because when you have a grid three by three, the only divisions that are possible without producing fractions are eight divided by two, four divided by two, six divided by three or two, and nine divided by Three. So those are the only options that I can use with these nine numbers in this grid and not have fractions because that is too complicated. For that, you actually need to have advanced code 
inside Excel, I'm going to skip division sign. So I'm not going to use division sign in my math puzzle. Now this formula, I'm going to copy it from the book I already created. And I'm going to type that later on when I edit this video, I'm going to type you the formula so you can paste it in your Excel file. So let's paste it here. So this is the formula that is going to randomly generate either plus sign, minus sign or X sign. So let's press enter. I'm going to increase this font of math operator. So it's going to be larger than the number because I want, not, I want math operator to look larger in the puzzle. So once I have increased it, I'm going to press control C. So press control C and paste it here, here 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 on this location this location this location this location this location and this location and as you can see if i click anywhere in the excel the sign mathematical operator is randomly changing so the formula is working the next thing i need to do is i need to connect these cells with these numbers here. So I'm going to press equal and I'm going to click on number one. So I'm going to press equal here, number two. Press equal here, number three. So just repeat this to fill the entire grid with the numbers from here. We need to use numbers from here so we can randomly shuffle them. So we are six. Seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so now we have the math puzzle three by three with each numbers repeating only once and numbers are one, two, nine. And in between we have math operators that are randomly shifting. The next formula that we need is the formula that it's going to go here. I already have that formula. It is going to be on your screen so you can copy it. I'm just going to grab it from here. Let's do it. So just type the formula exactly as you see it on the screen. Exactly as you see it on the screen. If your starting cell is A1. If your starting cell is not A1, then you need to adjust the formula. This formula is for this first row. So that means it's going to work for all the rows. So I can control C and paste it here and paste it here. So control V. Now you see that I have these two hashtags. So this is not an error. This just means that my font is too big and I cannot see the numbers. So I'm going to reduce the font by two in all cells. So I can actually see the numbers. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one here. So the first column, I'm going to click here, control A, I'm going to copy the formula. The formula for you, it's going to be on your screen so you can type it in. So once again, this formula is for all the columns. So I can reduce the font. Control C and paste it here and paste it here. If you are not sure, did you type everything correctly? Check it. One minus two is how much? Minus one plus three is two. One plus four is five. Five minus seven is negative two. So the formula is working. In this case, we have two times five. That's 10 minus eight is two. So we see that the formula is giving the correct results. If and only if you are happy with how everything here looks like. If you want to change something, now is the time. If you want to have this pink, purple, gray. If you want fonts to be larger or smaller, do that now. You can change that later on but you will have to change it in everything that you create after this stage. So now it is the best moment for you to adjust the font and how the appearance of the puzzle is going to look like. 
Also, if I'm creating a puzzle book, I need to have something to numerize my puzzle. So I need to label this puzzle as number one, and then I'm going to have number two, number three, number four. The best space that I decided to use is this box here. So this box here, it belongs to the puzzle number one, and it's not being used. So I'm going to type one here. I want this one to look like this, but if you type the value one with a bracket, the Excel is not going to count on this cell anymore as a number, it's going to treat this as a text because I need it to, trade, uh, to treat this cell as a number, not a text. I'm not going to type bracket. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this bold. I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to align it to the right and I'm going to right click on this cell and go to format cells. I'm going to go to custom and I'm going to type hashtag. Hashtag means whatever is inside the cell and then I'm going to add brackets. So that means whatever number is inside this cell, Excel is going to add bracket to it, but it is going to treat that number inside cell as a number and I'm going to click OK. So this is what I have now and I'm happy with how this looks like. And I'm going to select all of this, Control C, and I'm going to paste it here. Now you see this is number one. I'm not going to type number two here because if I type here number two, then every other I need to type it as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press equal whatever value is here plus one. You see, now once I uh, duplicate this sheet, the only number I have to change is going to be this one. Because once I change this one, this one is going to automatically change because it's going to be this number plus one. Also, we have here zeros. The reason why we have zeros because now this cell is connected to this cell here. What I need to do is I need to connect it with this row here or this column here, but I'm not going to use the same order I used here. So I'm going to mix it up. So I'm going to press equal and I'm going to start with eight. It doesn't matter. It is completely random. Just make sure that you are not using the same order as you used here. So let's go here. I need to have nine. One can be here, four. So now I'm just looking all the numbers that I did not use so far. So seven, I did not use two. One, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't use six. And now I have two puzzles. I decided my puzzle book is going to have six puzzles per page and 15 puzzles per solution. So on the solution page, I'm going to have 15 puzzles. So now I have two. I need to select all of this. Control C to copy. And here, Control V to paste. And again, Control V to paste. Now this number here is one. So what I want this to do is equal whatever is here plus one. So you see now I have one, two, three, and four is automatic because it is adding one number to this one here. And I'm going to do that here as well. So four plus one, it is five and six. And now in the future, if I want to make another page, all I have to do is if I type here seven and press equal, you see now I have eight, nine, 10, 11, so everything is automatically changed. I do not have to type all the numbers. I just need to type this number here, the first number. And of course, you see here, I need to connect these cells that are now zero with the numbers here. And once again, I'm going to use random order. I'm just picking numbers from this column R. Just make sure that you do not pick the same number 
twice. So that is what is important. The order is not important, just you can mix them up. Just make sure that you did not use the same number twice. So one, two, three is missing. So let's pick seven here. Let's pick three. You will not have to do this all the time. This is just first time until you have template. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, let's do that for this one as well. So this would be maybe part that I could speed up. So maybe I'm going to speed up this part of the video. I hope this is clear what we are doing here. We are connecting with random numbers that is going to be shuffled in the column in the column R. So let's see what I'm missing. Seven. And then I didn't use one. Or I'm not going to speed up. One, two, three, four. Because I really want to see how long the tutorial is going to be without cutting anything. One, two, three, four, five. What am I missing? Eight. I'm missing eight. Okay. And the last two. Because this. This is what you need to do. If you do not have money to buy software and if you do not have money to hire someone or if you do not have skills to do it without instructions, this is how you do the job. It takes time. That is just how it is. It takes time, but it is possible. This is what I'm trying to show you with this video and most of my other videos. It is possible to do almost everything for free. It is just going to take time and you need to have skills. You need to have skills. If somebody tells you that you do not uh, need skills to have success, then it is a lie. It is an absolute utter lie. So one, two, three, four, five. What am I missing? I'm missing nine nine and here i need i need what i'm going to do here i'm going to do three i didn't do three equals four did i do four in the first row i did let's do eight let's do what did i not do okay let's do eight it doesn't matter it's going to shuffle later on anyway so it's not important uh, no, I do not want two. I want six. I want nine. Let's start with nine. Okay. Equal. Let's do one. One. Four. I did not use four. Did I use five? Yes, I did. Nine. Did I use nine already? Yes, I did use nine. Let's do two. Two, one, two, three, four, five is missing. Six is missing. So let's do seven here and let's do six here. I didn't do six. Okay. So now we are done. We have everything. We have first six puzzles. And when it comes to puzzles, we are practically done. We just need to now duplicate it and decorate it. But we are finished when it comes to puzzles. The only thing that we need to do now is check is the font of this section here small enough. Are we going to get errors? So let's just double click anywhere in the Excel to refresh the puzzles. It looks like the numbers are good. I'm not getting any errors. If you do get errors, you can reduce the font a little bit or you can make these cells. So let's do that as well as an option. So select all these cells where you have the answer and make it a little bigger, maybe 45. Okay. Now, uh, one thing that you need to note about Excel is that Unlike PowerPoint, you cannot select what uh, output you want when it comes to inches, how wide and how tall your page can be. The only way to do that is by installing something that is allowing you to use P 
PDF export as print. So what that means is once I'm finished with this file, I will not have the ability to use or I should not use export as PDF. Let me show you. So this one here, I cannot use this one. The reason why I cannot use this one is unless I used a page size that is inbuilt in Excel, it is not going to give me what I want. So what actually I'm going to use, I'm going to use a print function. So print function. And I'm going to use a PDF as a printer. So there is, if you click on this one, you're not going to have all the options I have. You are probably going to have Microsoft print to PDF, but I have PDF creator from, um, I have from Adobe, I have from Nitro. You will have Microsoft print to PDF most likely, and you can use this one. So make sure that it is selected here and make sure that your scaling is fit sheet on page. So that is what we need, fit sheet on page. Now you see now this is being included. So this is what we need to remove. So go back and click on the print page preview and now remove this here. So make sure that the blue border is around your six puzzles. So let's go back to print and you see now I have my puzzles. Now you can fit this right now and my suggestion is that you fit this right now. You see this is too high and this is okay the left size is okay but this is too high on the edge. I want my puzzles to be in the middle. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to margins and I'm going to click on custom margins and I'm going to increase the top margin and I'm going to increase left margin just by a little. So let's see what's that going to give me. Okay. So now it is, this is a little bit down and this is a little bit to the left. What I could do is go back. I could increase this one here to give some room between the puzzles. And let's go back, print. And now this looks much better. I can even go more down here. So let's go to custom settings, custom margins. I'm going to type 2.8 from the top. Let's see what that's going to do. Okay, now I like this. I like this. This is okay. I have room on the top. I have room on the bottom. I have room here. I have room here. I like this. I could make numbers bigger right now. So this is completely optional. So this is now just aesthetics what I'm doing. I'm going to make these numbers. So I'm just going to, let me zoom in so you can see. I'm just going to hold control and I'm going to select only the numbers because I just want to change no, maybe I could change everything here. What is this? This is 20 and this is 24. No, I have to select. Maybe let's let's try everything 24. Let's see, is that going to be too big? No, it's okay. In fact, it's okay. So I'm changing all the font to 24, not the solution. Remember, we are not changing the solution because the solution numbers can be larger, can be negative. So I'm just changing the size of the numbers inside the puzzle grid. And that is now for me 24. So the font is 24. So let's see how is that looking. Yeah, I like this much better. Okay. I'm not going to convert this into a puzzle yet. I'm just going to keep everything visible. So I'm not going to convert this into puzzle yet. I'm going to keep it visible and I'm going to continue to create the rest of my pages. Also, I'm going to rename my sheet to puzzle one to six. So this is my sheet with puzzles one to six. And now that I, I have set the print size, the print margins, the font size, if I'm happy with everything, now I can duplicate this. If you are not happy with something here, make sure that you change it now. 
once you start duplicating, you will have to manually change that in every single sheet that you duplicate. So click on the sheet, right click on the mouse, move or copy, click on create a copy, move to end and click OK. Now that you have that, hold shift and click on both of them, right click, move or copy, move to end, create a copy and click OK. Now again, click on the first one, hold shift, click on the last one, right click, move or copy, move to end, create a copy. Once again, click on the first one, click on the last one, move, no view code, uh, click on move or copy, create a copy, move to the end. Okay, I believe we have enough. And now let's start changing. This is going to be puzzle number seven. Change this to number seven and change this one from seven to 12. So change the name of the sheet. The next one is, this number is 13. You see, I'm only changing this number and automatically everything else is changed. So this is puzzle. 13 to 18. Go to the next one, 19 here, and here, 19 to 24. Change the number here, 25, and change the name of the sheet, 25 to 30. Next one is 31, and the name is 31 to 36 this is 37 change the name 37 to 42 next one 43 change the name to 43 to 48 this one is 49, 49 to 54, this one is 55, so puzzle 55 to 60, here is 61, puzzle 61, press the process, we are reaching 100, this is 67, 67 to 72, 73 here. So this is why it is important that the first page is properly made. If the first page is wrong then everything else it's going to flop so 79 and you see all the other numbers are automatically adjusted so 79 to 84 go here this is 85 so that's 85 to 90 and we have 91 91 to 96. Oh, I have 91 to 96, and I'm missing one sheet. I need one more sheet, so move or copy, create a copy, move to end. And this one is going to be 97. And you see now, hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. I'm going to reduce the font for 100, 101, 102. So this is going to be from 97 to 102. So I'm just going to show you how to create puzzle book up to 100 or 102 puzzles. If you want to continue, this is how you do it. So you just continue this entire procedure until you reach amount of puzzles that you want to have in your book. And now that I have, I believe 10, 11 of sheets, Let's see what do I have in print. So click on print and click on print entire workbook. And let's scroll through the pages to see what we have. 
So this is page one, this is page two, this is page three, this is page four. You see the numbers here are changing 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So it is working. Everything is looking good. So this is how it's going to look in PDF. Once I export it, this is how it's going to look like in PDF. I'm happy with this. So this was the first part with puzzles. Now I need to make an Excel sheet for solutions. And I'm going to start with a brand new sheet. I'm going to shrink it to a cube. I'm going to make this larger so you see what I'm doing. And I'm going to rename the sheet to solution. 1 to 15 because my book is going to be US letter size I already know that six puzzles can fit on one page and 15 solutions can fit on one page now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this one here it doesn't matter really I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to paste it here completely with everything. Now what I need to do is I need to reduce the font drastically because this is for solution page. And I'm going to change this size as well. I'm going to change the font of this one as well. And I'm going to type number one here. So the font of solution doesn't have to be that big. I'm going to select this one and I'm going to make them even smaller. And I'm going to copy this, Control C, and paste it, I don't know, maybe here or here. Okay, let's try it here. And let's try it, no, let's do, let's do two rows, two rows here. Now, warning, I have in column R numbers. In column S, I have I have my sorting, so I want to avoid R and S. So in this solution sheets, I do not want to have anything in R and S. So I'm going to do everything to skip them. So I'm going to paste it here and I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to make these two, three uh, columns smaller. And I'm skipping them because I want to avoid having anything in R and S because this is where I have my sorting numbers for all the puzzles. So I want, I want to avoid using these two columns in any, any new sheets that I'm going to use. This one is going to be this plus one. And this one is going to be this one plus one. So that is my one, two, three. Now I'm going to select everything, select all of this, control C and paste it here. This one is going to be this one, the last number, number three here, plus one. And you see now what happened. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, control C, copy. So that's nine, copy, that's 12 one more that is 15. now i'm going to click on page break preview and i'm going to make sure that the blue one reaches the outside corner of my solutions and just to be safe i'm going to go to file print i'm going to click on print active sheet so that is my solution page i'm just i just started to work on and I have now my 15 solutions here. So now I can see that I can actually make rows a little bit bigger. I cannot make columns any bigger. So columns are going to stay the way they are. But I can make rows a little bigger. So they are a little bit more comf comfortable. Let's do that. Let's do just a little bit. And let's go back to print preview. To see, oh yeah, this is now, I believe this is perfect. Okay, this is, uh, uh, okay, I love this. I love this, this is perfect. So I just changed the size of the cells in row and now I have my 15 solutions. 
So at the moment they are looking good. Later on, once I have actual numbers inside, I'm going to see do I have to fix the font size in it. But I have my 15 solutions on one page and it's looking good so far. I'm not going to touch it anymore unless I have to change the font. But I'm going to uh, reach that bridge, cross that bridge once I reach that, reach that bridge. So let me zoom this in now. 200. And let me show you what now needs to be done. And once again, you only have to do this once for the first 15 puzzles. And then we're going to duplicate it. So cl click on this one, the first one. Click on equal. Now go back to your sheet where you have puzzle one and click on this one here. Just click on it and press enter. That's it. Now, whatever is in your puzzle number one, cell number one, that is what we have here. Now, you do not have to do that cell by cell. What you can do now is click on the right corner and drag it to the right. And once again, click on the first one and drag it down. And now repeat that here. Click on it. Go down. Click on this one. Go right and click on this one and go right all the way to the end of the puzzle. And now you can see I have hashtag and hashtag. So that means maybe my font is too big for solution, but I can always reduce it to see is it going to change. So just because you have a hashtag, the reason why I have hashtag is not because it's not going to look good in print. It is because I'm really zoomed in. So go back to 100 before you start reducing font. So before you start reducing font of your solution pages, go back to 100. Right now I'm almost at 200 uh, percentage of view. So go to 100. Whatever you see at 100, that is how it's going to look like in print. So I'm not going to change anything now. I'm just going to continue by connecting the solution sheet with the puzzle sheet. So press equal. So this is my puzzle two. I need to go and find my puzzle two and click on the first number in the puzzle two and press enter. This one, again, all I have to do is drag it here and drag it down. And then I'm going to drag this one down, this one down, and this one to the right and this one to the right. And you can verify if you are not sure that you did it correctly, you can verify. So we have 37, 13, 11, 6, 8, 72. So let's check puzzle number two. 37, 13, 11, 6, 8, 72. So you see now our solution is connected to this puzzle. So it is working. It is good. So let's continue. So this is puzzle three, go back to puzzle three, click on the first one, press enter, and now drag this one to the right and drag this one down and then this one and this one. So let's start with this one, drag it down and drag it down. Now, if you are wondering, if you never used Excel in this way before, what this is actually doing is this now is now connected to puzzle one to six sheet cell A9. So this is A9. Once I drag this to the right, it is connecting to the next cell. So B9, C9, D9. So if I drag it, it is connecting to any upcoming cell after the first one. And also the same going down A9, A10, a11, A12. So if I continue dragging this down, it is going to connect to all the cells that are under this cell. So that is why I do not have to do this for every cell manually. I can just drag it to the right and drag it to uh, downwards. Let's continue puzzle number four. Let's do that for puzzle number four. So usually when I do this, in case you do not know me, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Marina from Marina Art Design. 
And uh, if you like this content, maybe I should not say that nobody's going to like this content because I'm forcing you to do stuff on your own instead of just giving you stuff for free. But if you like this content, you can consider subscribing, liking this video, all the usual stuff. And what I was going to say is I have three monitors for, I don't know, for past 15 years. I've been even longer and there is absolutely no way I could work with just one monitor. That's like nightmare to me. I always need to have at least two. That's my minimum. But ideal is three or four monitors and the reason why i can do this in two hours because this is now quite boring i mean you are not doing anything uh, what was it now are we on puzzle six i believe you are on puzzle six is it puzzle six yes so this is j9 this is a9 this is j9 so this is puzzle five this is now puzzle six um, what was I saying? I, f I forgot what I was saying. Um, usually I have something on my second monitor, like a documentary or movie or music playing. And it's just easy. So it's easy to do this in two hours. So we are now done with puzzles one to six now we are switching to puzzle seven so let's find puzzle seven puzzle seven is here so let's drag puzzle seven puzzle here drag it down drag it down so yeah this is not hard to do but it just takes time but the the best part is once you have this finished you have this utmost joy that you have created a math puzzle book generator inside excel and you can do whatever you want with it and it's not just this of course you are also learning because you can use this method for anything else. So it's not going to be just this puzzle, just this thing. Whatever I show you here, you can also use for other stuff, for other puzzles or things. So this is puzzle nine. Let's stretch this one out. Nine. I think I'm going to speed this up. And I'm going to see you in a couple of seconds. Okay, so now I have my first 15. Obviously, what I have to do now is do the same for puzzles 16 to 17, 18. And then once I have 1 to 15 and 16 to 30, I need to duplicate these two sheets and continue and make everything else up to 100. So we have 102 puzzles. So here we have space. So you here you can put like, please leave a review or something like that. So you have this extra space on the last page because we only have 102 puzzles here. So that is extra space here. So we have now solutions. And we have now puzzles. But the question is, how are we going to change these numbers here? Now, these numbers are shifting randomly as per the value that is here. Now, this can be done manually. So you can select these two cells and you can go to data, sort, column S. So sort per column S, cell values, smallest to largest. And click OK. And you see now we have brand new puzzles. Now we want to do this in all our puzzle sheets. And for this, we're going to use a macro that I'm going to display to you on the screen right now. And once we have that macro, so once you have that macro inside 
your developer tab so go to developer tab go to visual basic go to insert module and then copy this text that you have on screen i'm also going to paste this text of this macro down below in description so you can paste it here let me show you how that macro looks like so sort column r in all sheets so that is this here so paste this code here in this module and close it and that's it then what you can do is you can run the macro from the developer tab so macros you will see it here let me just open you so sort columns are in all sheets so you can use it here or what you can do is same thing i did so in the first sheet i created a shape so insert shape any shape and once you have a shape right click on it and assign macro so click on assign macro and then you can do this you can select that macro and once you do that once you click on your button here this is going to become button you see i have now cross but if i hover above it it is now button so if i click on this it is going to convert all my sheets it's going to go through all my sheets and it's going to shuffle the r and s uh, columns and it's going to generate brand new puzzles so each time you click on this, each time you run this macro, you're going to get new puzzles. You see here now I have brand new puzzles and because my solutions are connected. So let's just verify puzzle number four, nine, five, three. So let's check puzzle number four in our solutions. Solutions nine, five, three. You see everything is now connected. Everything is working. We do have one more thing to uh, do, and that is we need to convert our puzzle sheets into actual puzzles. Now, at this stage, at this stage, I recommend once you have everything ready and the button is ready, make a duplicate of this sheet. So make a duplicate or better yet, make three duplicates of this sheet because we're going to make a different variations of this puzzle. Variation number one is the easiest one, and that is no end results. So no end results. Select the first sheet with puzzle, and then look for the last sheet with puzzle. Hold the shift key before you click on it, and then click on it. By doing this, you have selected all the sheets with puzzles. Now go back to first one. So, so just scroll don't click on it just scroll until you see the first one hold the control key and click on all cells with the end number so the final number so just click on them while holding the control key click on them click on them Scro let go the control key scroll down hold the control key key again and continue clicking okay continue clicking let go control key go to font and select white so never delete the numbers because we need them just make them white and now you can let go go to file print and you see now we have our puzzles so this is a puzzle with no end results and at the end so let's go to page 21 i believe page 21 are solutions and you see our solution page so we have solution and we have uh, puzzles and each time i click on this button I'm going to get new set of puzzles that I can print out as PDF and the end result is going to be this. So this is my PDF file. If you want to add page number, for example, you want to add page number that is also easy to do. You just need to go back here, extend this and then add the page number here or here, wherever you want. But I would recommend that you do this at the beginning. So if you want to have a page number, make sure that you do that at the beginning 
when you make the first sheet and then set this as a page number and then use it as a page number for everywhere else. So this is something that you need to do. It is best that you do this at the beginning if you want to have page number. What would be the second version of the puzzle? Second version of the puzzle would be that let's change all this to black. So the second version of the puzzle is once again, select everything, all the puzzle sheets from those duplicate files that you created, select the numbers, suggest so numbers and make the numbers white. So this is version number two where the numbers are missing. So this is harder version. Numbers are missing, but they are always numbers from to nine. So no repeat, no, uh, no duplicates, numbers from one to nine, they need to fit in here in order for these solutions to be correct. Another option that you can do, and this one is a little bit harder, is you can have a mix. So you can have this number, this number, this number, this number, and maybe this number as white. Now, in order for you to create puzzle that is mix, you need to know mathematics. So in this case, let's see, is this puzzle solvable? Now, I have this number, this number, and this number, only this number is missing, so I can solve this number. Once I solve this number, I can solve this number. Once I solve this number, automatically my row, this row and this column is solved. So that means I can for sure make this one invisible because once I solve this, I will be able to solve this. And once I solve this row, because I have three numbers, I will be able to solve this. So you need to make sure that you do not delete too much of the numbers. So the puzzle still needs to be solvable without guessing. It needs to have mathematical uh, logic inside. So for mixture, you actually need math, know, have skills in math, so you know what to erase, what numbers to erase, and then the puzzle is still be solvable. But you have two versions, the easy one with no results, and this one, harder one, with the middle grid numbers missing, and then the mixture, and for the mixture, you do need to change manually in each puzzle what numbers are going to be missing. And remember, do not delete them, just make them white. And that is going to look like in print, like this. So um, this is no, num no numbers in grid, this is no solution, uh, no end results, and this is a mixture puzzle. So you can make a mixture of this within the same book, you can create different variations of the puzzle as well. But now that you have math puzzle generator, you can do whatever you want with it. You can continue after 100, you can make this for 200 puzzles, so have a bigger book. You can make this into printable, so you don't have to do this entire book, you can, you can just do this first page and make this into a printable, so you have a lot of options. I know this video was a little longer, as usual for me. It was a tutorial. Now you know how you can make a math puzzle book generator inside Excel and print them as PDF. So this here is an actual print ready PDF. You can now maybe add some decorations inside here if you want, but I would suggest that if you want some decorations, if you want page number, do that at the beginning. Do that at the beginning so it, easy, it is easier for you to adjust later on. So make sure that the first page that you make, first sheet that you make, it is looking exactly how you want it to look like at the end, after everything is finished. Because, for example, if I want to change something in this one now, then I need to do it manually in all the other sheets it is much easier that you set everything once you do the first sheet. If this tutorial is too long for you, again, this Excel that I created, it's going to be in my Gumroad store. You can purchase it if you do not want to follow the tutorial, if you do not want to do this manually. So that is an option for you. You can buy this Excel file and build on it, practice on it, do whatever you want with it. Okay, until next video, I'll see you down below in the comments. If you have any questions, ask me down below. Bye, everybody. Stay safe.